Welcome back to Queen's Mindset. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Welcome. We are super excited to have you here. We can't believe that it's season three already. I know I say that all the time, but I'm like, wow, we are here already. And guys, guess what? We have yet again another powerful lady here tonight to share her story with us. I cannot wait for you to hear from her. But before we go any further, if you have not done it already, make sure you hit that subscribe button just down below and make sure that you're subscribed to this channel so that you are kept abreast with every video that we bring up. All right, let's get started. Welcome, 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 Deborah. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm fine. Thank you. How are you doing? I am doing well. We're super excited to have you here with us tonight. I can't wait for you to share with them. But... Before you share anything, I want you to tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. <sighs> what do I do? I wear many hats. Mm -hmm. I'm Deborah McCollin. Some folks know me as Mariposa. I'm most recently from November 25th, Coach Mariposa. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I was in the poetry arena performing and that was my name I used to use Mariposa but mm -hmm. there was a there was a fight going on in me to stick to the poetry or to do coaching to help ladies who were abused mm. so eventually I made the decision you know what no matter what you do coaching is there it's not going anywhere yeah so get to it I like that I like that get to it you heard that lady get to it <laughs> Do not delay. Get to it just exactly. like you ever did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Deborah, you have a story that we can't wait to unpick. I like how I've been asking all the other ladies, I want you to start from the beginning and tell us where this started. <sighs> the story of abuse. Mm -hmm. And people people find it weird when I, when I smile, when I say that. Yeah. Because I have passed that stage now. So I can afford to smile when I talk about it and when I pull others along. But it started when I was little, mm -hmm. child abuse. My mom, she used to leave me next door. And I had an older cousin who thought yeah. little Debbie was cute. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it was, with him, it was a lot of falling and stuff, no penetration, thank God. But then when I got older, very first boyfriend, he decided that, you know what? Mm. When I'm done with you, nobody will want you. Wow. That included rape mm. and physical abuse and obviously emotional abuse as well. Mm. To the point where whatever he said goes, I had no opinions. I had no mind, nothing that I wanted to do was good enough. Mm -hmm. And it's a case of basically submission 1,000%. I wouldn't even say 100. 1,000%. Wow. Wow. Any dreams that I had used to be chucked one side. I wanted to dance. He would always tell me things like, you're going to go dance with men. Mm. He was very insecure. If I caught the bus, he would ask me something that I consider so stupid. Mm -hmm. Who rub upon me? Who rub upon you? Wow. Okay. But the way it ended was very sad because as far as he was concerned, it was supposed to be last beating, my last breath and everything. Mm -hmm. But it did not work out how he expected it to. Wow. Because... I have, I lived through that. Mm -hmm. I made it. Yes, I had another bad relationship after that. Mm -hmm. Because I guess it was a case of looking for love in the wrong place. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But guess what? Yeah. I realized I had to stop. 
because all I was doing was going from one relationship to the next. Mm -hmm. There wasn't any space in between to catch myself, to know myself. Yeah. And that is where the self-love comes in for me. Mm -hmm. Some That's people important. started telling me I became vain. Mm. Some people started telling me I started doing things that were out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. but I started doing things my way to please me. Yeah. Yes, some of the things were a bit weird. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I lost a good few years of my life with people who did not deserve me. And I had to practically play catch up with yeah. myself. I went back dancing. I went back modeling. Good. I started writing. I started doing things I wanted to do. I mm -hmm. even opened a little business. Nice. Babysitting. Because that's something I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so the story went from there to then I started. Yeah, you, end up, you got married. You have kids. That didn't work out because at that time my mind was still kind of warped with what to expect. But he was not abusive, thank God. I have two beautiful children, well, two beautiful adult children. Mm -hmm. I'm the gorgeous granddaughter now. Mm -hmm. I am in a relationship now where I can say I am free to be me. Mm -hmm. My opinions matter. Mm -hmm. And it's a case of I can, I can do me. I am respected. I am loved. Things yeah. that I never knew before existed. Wow. It sounds bad, yes, but guess what? Somebody had to go through this to help other people. That's right. That's right. You know? So let's go back a bit. Now you said it started when you were a little girl. You know your cousin and stuff. So were your parents aware of the abuse that you were getting from? No. Her? No. no. I was living with my mother and my great aunt. Mm -hmm. My great aunt was extremely strict. And nothing that I said was ever good enough for her because she had this fondness for boy children. Mm. She had no use for the girls. Wow. I had to stay inside, learn to cook, and do homework. Mm -hmm. And whatever boys wanted to do, they were allowed to do. So talking to her was all the question. And my mother was sadly under her thumb. Mm. So it was like two peas in a pod. Wow. And where was right? your so nobody knew? Nobody knew about that. And where was your dad? Where was your dad when all of this was happening? Was he around? <laughs> my dad was not around. Wow. But my mother called him when I started acting out. You know, when you become a teenager, mm -hmm. sometimes you do some really strange things. Yeah, that's and, yes. and he came around because, according to him, I embarrassed him an evening at his workplace. Wow. So he came around then. Mm -hmm. And he decided I needed a father's correction. Mm. So he took off his belt. Mm -hmm. and I raised my hand mm -hmm. and I grabbed the belt because you were not in my life before why are you coming now yeah. to step in here you were not there before so no I grabbed the belt and honestly we tussled a bit mm -hmm. and all he could ask my mother was what are you feeding this girl wow because I meant he was not to hit me that day mm -hmm. right so he 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 knew after, long after, my mother knew when I was in my 30s. What? And even, yes, and even then, she did not believe me. Really? Even then. What? Okay, the situation with the boyfriend, they know about that because that came to the stage where police had to be involved because I went to the police station. Okay? Right. Your cousin? So, no, for the boyfriend. Oh, for the boyfriend. Okay. Right. But then they knew about that with my cousin. Mm -hmm. She only knew about that in my 30s. And even then, like I said, she did not believe it. And did I she have, why she didn't believe you? or She didn't believe me. Did she say why? Did she say why? She no, didn't? she didn't say why. She didn't say why. Since so then, I've seen him. 
-hmm. And one time I used to feel this anger. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel it anymore. I don't mm -hmm. feel it anymore. Mm -hmm. I was given all sorts of labels mm -hmm. by my cousin. Mm -hmm. They called me in Bajan terms. They called me great. Mm -hmm. They called me poor great. Mm -hmm. They called me bougie. Mm -hmm. But guess what? I am very pleased with my outcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because all of those people that had all these things to say, None of them, sad to say, has they have they accomplished anything with their lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sadly, yeah. Was, exactly. Yeah. So, who did you have to, you know, to lean on in that, you know, when you went through that phase with your your cousin? Who did? Who was there for you? The did you have anybody to, I mean, to talk to about what you were going through with your with your relative, your cousin? Father the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Growing up, it was not a case where the family was close. Mm -hmm. And because of my aunt, my, uh, because we, where we grew up, there was family all around. But as much as it was family all around, nobody wanted to come around because of my aunt, because not only was she very strict, but she was, she was really mean to the kids in the neighborhood. Wow. You know, kite mm -hmm. flying time, you couldn't fly your kite around her house. You had to go all the way down, away from her house. She was mean to everybody. So there wasn't anybody really for me to talk to that sort of way. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, so now we, we, we went. So how old were you when, when that happened, that encounter with your cousin? I was about nine. Only nine? Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So now you grew up. Your father wasn't in the picture, so you didn't have anyone to, you know, you didn't have a father's love in a sense. Well, let's not say he wasn't in the picture, but he wasn't in the picture in the way that he, he should have been. And well, I must say this. Mm -hmm. I had an um, I have an uncle. I have to say I have because he's still mm -hmm. around. Good. But he left, he left the island when I was five years old. Wow. And he's the person that gave me the name Marposa because he used to call me his baby but play. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't there then, but like probably like just after yeah, the real thing, the real big incident happened, mm -hmm. he just miraculously reappeared in my life, sending letters and everything. So I told him what happened and he said, baby girl, you gotta be strong. You can beat this. Do not let this beat you. Mm -hmm. so he was really upset with mommy because she didn't listen. Mm -hmm. Even as an adult, she didn't listen. Yeah. You know, sometimes what I have found, sometimes when parents hear these things, for some parents hear it for the first time, they're in such denial mm -hmm. that instead of, you know, believing it, they try to find ways to prove to themselves that it couldn't be true. Because yeah. the, the fact that it is true hurts more than the reality that, yeah. you know, maybe yeah. it isn't, you know. So most times that's what I find happened. But now you've moved past this um this first encounter now of being abused. You've grown up now, you're into the dating arena and you found this man and you said, as you got into this relationship, here comes abuse again. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask, were there any signs? Because when you shared earlier, you talked about the questions he would ask and the different things that he would do, which stems off of that narcissistic behavior. Yeah. Were you yeah. able to spot those red flags mm -hmm. before? Honestly, honestly, Mm -hmm. I'll say this now. I know now because I know better. Back then, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And in the case of not having anybody to guide me, yeah. anybody to talk to, you know when you go in school, your friends have boyfriends, and you hear with the any boyfriends doing stuff, but you are not able to because you're strict of the skin. So then when you do get out there, you're not sure what's really happening, but you figure, okay, this is what it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And if I had to go back in time now, yeah, I don't think I would have even looked in his direction. Wow. 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 So at that time when he came, he was giving you something that you wanted. He was filling a void. 
but you just look past all the other red flags because this one void was being filled. Hey, I have exactly. a boyfriend. Right exactly. Yeah, yeah. So when he started acting out and you know started tripping and so on, doing all these different things, uh, at what point did you realize you know what I have to get out of this? Okay, honestly, mm -hmm. it took me about three years. Mm -hmm. But the day that I decided this is it was a day when I decided I wanted to go to study. Mm -hmm. That was a problem because mm -hmm. he was telling me, I think I am more than anybody else. And I want to be this and I want to be that. But truly and truly, I wanted to be this and I wanted to be that. <laughs> and what is what is wrong with my doing these things? Yes. Yeah. So then I tell myself, you know what? This is it. I had enough of this nonsense. Mm -hmm. All you want to do is keep me down. All you want to do is to bruise me up. I had enough of this rubbish. Mm -hmm. So I remember quite well, I was working at a dentist at the time. Mm -hmm. And I told him, which was which I think that is a mistake on my part. I told him, I want you to come for me at work. Mm. When you come for me, I want you to come by me and take your things and take them home. Mm -hmm. That evening, he came for me at four o'clock. I got home at 30 the night in the company of the police. Wow. How? Because after all he did was done, mm -hmm. he drove up to the top of the hill and I realized, you know what, there's a policeman right here. I told him, I need to vomit. Mm. And he said, not in my car. I said, okay, no problem. He mm -hmm. said, open door and do it. The door opened, I flew out. Wow. I even ran past the policeman to the police station that was right there on the top of the hill, mm -hmm. barefooted. And by the time I got in there, I could not even talk because I was out of breath. Then for when I got there to hear, wait a minute, your mother came here reporting you missing. Wow. Now, my thing is this. I used to question it a lot. I used to ask myself, suppose I didn't do that what could have happened mm -hmm. i told myself you know what you need to stop wondering what would have happened mm -hmm. be thankful you got out yes okay mm -hmm. so he stayed waiting to see if i was coming back and the policeman that was actually standing close by mm -hmm. that i ran past he went he radioed in the station and asked if i came in there describing me mm -hmm. apparently the guy had stayed there waiting. I don't know if he thought I was going to come back to the car. Wow. He stayed there waiting, and then he moved off. Mm -hmm. But then after I went and I made a complaint, they found him mm -hmm. at his workplace. Mm -hmm. He was a DJ at the time, mm -hmm. and he was in there playing music like nobody's business. Wow. And when they brought him in, I was still there, mm -hmm. and he looked at me with this really nasty, cruel look. And tell me, but I love you though. Wow. At that stage, I was like, really, true. I don't give a hoot. Mm -hmm. This cannot be love. Not what you did. And honestly, it was a case where I used to live on aloe for my skin mm -hmm. and cocoa butter, the raw cocoa butter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I used to get nightmares because the type of person I am, if you told me something, I wouldn't just hear you describe it. Mm. I would see it and feel it. Mm. So getting a nightmare, I was feeling something. It was a really restless time of my life. Yeah. To the point I quit my job. I didn't want to go to the house. Nothing. I didn't want to do anything anymore. Mm -hmm. Right, and that was really right. Wow, wow, wow. So you started to have um, patches of depression. That's what you were experiencing at that time. I think, that, I think it was probably pastures, not patches. <laughs> it was really, it was really a lot. 
It was a lot because, like I said, I did not even want to, I didn't even want to go to the supermarket. My, my, my. Right. And all this time when you were feeling like this, he was still around, still doing the same things? Yes, mm. but not with me. Okay, so you guys had already broken that you were now on yeah. your own now. It's just I right. was done. I was done. I was done. I did not look back. Mm -hmm. He could have dropped dead for all I care. I wasn't looking back because after you did that to me, and you're going to tell me when you're done with me, nobody's going to want me. Yeah. And then you're going to turn up in the police station and say in front of the policeman, but I love you though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no caring. There's no love there. So I left. That was it. Yeah. His family, because I went to the stage where he spent the night in prison, mm -hmm. holding cell, whatever. His mm -hmm. family called me and telling me about not, um, not pressing charges and all of that. I'd be lenient. Mm -hmm. But nobody was like, hey, Debbie, how are you? Mm, that's the important part. Okay. There was no Debbie, how are you? Mm -hmm. You know, but yeah. that's okay. And did your mother know about this? Did she know? Oh, yes. That she knew about. Mm -hmm. That she knew about because the night many police brought me home, it was like, I was living with her. Mm -hmm. she brought me home. First thing she saw was my clothes all bloodied. Wow. And then the police, because you know, obviously, in a situation like that, mm -hmm. a female police officer is going to come with you. Yeah. And then she asks what happened. I refused to open my mouth and talk. They did the talking to me. Mm -hmm. Told my clothes and everything. And she was like, I tell you, we didn't go blah, 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 blah. Wow. wow. At that time, that's not what I wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, not at all. That's not what I wanted. Yeah. You know, and she tried talking to me after, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't talk because it's like when I wanted to talk, you were not listening. Mm -hmm. When I was telling you stuff, you didn't pay me any money. When I asking you questions, you're not listening and answering what I want. You're just giving me all negative. Right. But um, you said something earlier that I, I wanted to tap back on. When you said that he, that when you got to the police station, they said that your mother reported you missing. Yeah. Why did she report you missing? Because I was not home the time I would normally be home. Oh. Because I would leave work for 4.30. Mm -hmm. And at least by 6, I would be home. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, so apparently she got right there. Mm -hmm. And. They said within a space of five minutes mm -hmm. after she left, I ran in there. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's crazy. So she, she without even knowing, she saved you and didn't even know. She knew. She knew, but she didn't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is crazy. Okay. So why do you think that it took you three years to, to me to stay in that relationship? What made you stay so long? That's something I always question, and all I could put it to mm -hmm. was probably the fear of what would happen after. Yeah. Well, at, at first, I know for a fact it was getting what I was missing, but then after, I know it had to be fear that kept me there, yeah. fear of what would happen to me after, because after what you get to know a person's patterns mm -hmm. and what they do, and you try, you try to change how you do things. So, okay, you figure, okay, if I don't do this, he's going to be okay. He's not going to be fretful. He's not going to be abusive. But then you realize when you change something in you, nothing is happening really. So that's when I started standing up for myself and decided, okay, yeah, I actually answered back. <laughs> Which was not done, but that was okay too. because. I realized I had a voice and I started using it. And then I decided I want to go back to school. I want to study. That was not done either. Who are you to want to do all of this? I was supposed to be kept down, you know? So yeah, it was probably fair and hoping that he would change. But I find sometimes that's the main thing we as like to do. 
we will wait around and hope that the person changes and don't know how to let go of the situation. That's very true. That's very true. Give me one second. Okay. I'll start to get some noise on the outside there. Okay. Um, where was I? You know, sometimes I find, and I hope you guys are listening really carefully to De uh, Deborah's story here. You know, sometimes we got to know when the season is up so that we can pack our bags and leave. But most times we stay, uh, we see all the signs. We see the signs before and we see the signs after. But sometimes what happens is that we allow the signs to stay hidden because we want one particular thing. You know, there's this one particular thing that you want and you you kind of settle. So you settle, you say, okay, I'm gonna stay here because I'm looking for love or I'm looking for whatever that thing is. And he's given, maybe he's given money, maybe he's given or whatever the situation is. You're getting that one thing that you want. So everything else that is wrong or surrounding you, you kind of just cover it up and yeah. try passion it up and keep stepping forward, hoping and praying that someday, somehow, magically it will just fade away but that doesn't happen you've heard um deborah's story so far that that was not her case and there's so many other persons out there who share their stories as well and that's not the case so i want you guys as you listen to her share you know read the signs see the signs that if you are in a similar situation right now they are red flags so we want you to be open to the right vibes and find someone to talk to. I know every situation is different. It's not easy to, you know, to go to your family. Like Deborah wasn't able to go to her mom, but you may have someone outside to go to a counselor. Just find somebody who would listen, go to a pastor, you know, go to someone and get that help. But don't stay there and suffer in silence because that's the worst place to be. So. Deborah, so now that relationship has ended because you decided that's it, I've had enough, and you're working on getting back out to school, how long did it take you to get back on your feet again and, you know, get back into the rhythm of things? It took me almost a year. Mm -hmm. It took me almost a year. Because mm -hmm. like I said, I didn't want to leave the house. I didn't want to go anywhere. I was ashamed. Yeah. I and even when I did start going back out, I started covering up a lot because even though the marks were healed mm -hmm. from other people's eyes, for me, I was still seeing them. Yeah. I was still seeing them. I was still feeling them. Mm -hmm. So I was very conscious. And sometimes it used to be like if when I saw people that both of us knew, I used to be thinking, what are these people thinking? What do they know? What are they saying? Mm. stigma yeah 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 stigma of society mm -hmm. you know so it took a while but then i said you know what enough is enough yeah i joined the modeling group nice. started modeling kinsey thor may you rest in peace <laughs> <laughs> i started back dancing mm -hmm. all the things i love i started doing Mm -hmm. sometimes in excess mm -hmm. when talk partying and everything because it's like the chains are off for me now so I can be me I can do what I want to do for me yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's good that's good so what are some of the steps then well I mean okay you just shared you started partying started going up started doing things for you more were these the steps that really helped you or were there other steps that you had to take to really, you know, to truly heal and, you know, to heal that way. Those were not the steps to help me. I think those were the steps to actually get me out the house. Mm, okay. and to get, and honestly, it, at that time, at first when I was doing all these things, it felt as if I was doing it to get back at him. Like saying, okay, see me now. I okay. Mm -hmm. I doing mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Because there were times when I was out that would actually see him. Wow. You know, but I'll tell you this. I used to be scared sometimes when I saw him at first because it's like um like I'm not scared, like more like anxiety. Yeah, yeah. Because when you look at this person, you remember, even if you were out with somebody else, you remember. But honestly, what helped me a lot was my faith. Because remember, as a child, when I was abused. 
It was God I spoke to. As an adult, yeah. I talked with God again. I started going to the beach. And I don't mean going in the water. Just sit and relax. Yeah. Process my thoughts. Do a lot of self-talk. Things that I know now that I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. But I know it was working for me. Mm -hmm. And I was feeling better about myself. Good. And I started realizing it wasn't the need for hair and makeup and clothes. Mm -hmm. I actually needed me then, not somebody else, nor things that money could buy. Yeah. Yeah. So do you know if he got help? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I cut ties mm -hmm. totally. Mm -hmm. Totally. Mm -hmm. Even our friends. Yeah. I cut ties with them too because I remember one of his set friends saw me a couple months after. Well, mm -hmm. probably like probably two years after. And he said to me, I hear you putting him out of penny pen. How you could do that though? Mm. And my reply was this. And I kept walking. <laughs> Because I have nothing to say yeah. to people who are going to be judging me yeah. and not knowing the situation. That's right. You know? Mm -hmm. But I know I got my help from inside. Mm -hmm. And eventually, as I got old, I started reading more mm -hmm. and, you know, doing personal research yeah. to help myself. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I went to a therapist. Good. Which bombed out. Really? How? <laughs> no, because that's she uh, she taught me what not to do. Uh, okay, okay. Because basically mm -hmm. what she did, I will go to her, you will talk, mm -hmm. and she would push you to think. And then at the end of the session, it was basically I used to feel if I was judged. Wow, and that's not there was there was no comfort there when I left. I used to leave more confused than when I went in. Mm. So after the third session, I said, "Okay, three times is the charm. Your yeah. time is up. I'm done with you." Wow. Right, but then that's when I went into the other relationship. Now that one was not as violent. Mm -hmm. But the violence was still there. Mm -hmm. In what form? Well, it was quite verbally abusive, mm -hmm. emotionally abusive. Mm -hmm. Strange enough, this person was very supportive mm -hmm. of my studying. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, still wanted to keep me down. Because I don't know, I think people were seeing a light that was probably brighter than they could handle. Wow. Right? And I always remember my great aunt, and I smiled when I said it. Mm -hmm. She always used to tell me when I was growing up, you are going to amount to nothing. Wow. This, was the, this is the same mean one? Yes. Mm. Okay. She lived long enough to see me graduate. Good. And I went and I made sure she knew I graduated and mm -hmm. I amounted to more than she expected. Mm -hmm. It might have been a bit vengeful on my part, mm -hmm. but at the time, that was necessary mm -hmm. because, no, you're not going to tell me what I am going to be. I know what I want to be. I know what I want to do. And because of all this I went through, yeah. I ended up writing a book when I was at UE, mm -hmm. Journey to Butterfly, a collection of poems mm -hmm. about abuse, but it takes you from abuse as a child yeah. right up to, to overcoming it as an adult. I love that. You know, and one of the poems in there is about my great aunt, mm. believe it or not, mm -hmm. because when the electricity went out, mm -hmm. she would always scare the little living daylights out to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't know 
that even fact was abused back then. Mm. But in doing the um, body social work courses, mm -hmm. we had to write something about our upbringing. Mm -hmm. And that is what brought that book to fruition. Wow. Right? And that book led me to counseling because a friend of mine told me, why don't you go and counsel women? They need to, to hear your story. And my very first workshop, I'll never forget, I was shaking in my boots at the Red Cross headquarters in Warren. I remember it to this day. Some friends of mine came for support. Some friends I didn't even know were coming were there. And I felt like, okay, good. Okay, you got this. Relax. And from then onward, I would speak different places, church groups, ladies groups. But I find now, well, this year, men are asking questions. The main question is, how can I help my partner that was abused? Mm. And that made me feel like, okay, good. You're, yes. you're doing some prevention there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But my, my dream, and I'm going to do it before the end of this year, yeah. is to talk to a group of adolescents, mm -hmm. the red flags, the red flags. If we can do more prevention, mm -hmm. we can save a lot more ladies That's from right. death and suicide. Yes. And we can save the guys as well, too. Yes, yes. That's right. That's right. So how long did your marriage last? Eight years. That's <laughs> <laughs> like you forgot already. <laughs> Eight years. Well, eight years. Okay, well, are you? But you said you got something beautiful from it because you got your beautiful children from that marriage. So that that is good. But right. when you started to recognize those signs, this was closer to the year eight, or was it before year eight that you recognized? Okay, hold on, I'm seeing some traits from my relationship. Not exactly the same, but they're very similar. Well, he wasn't abusive. Mm -hmm. He wasn't abusive. He just did not know how to cope because mm -hmm. at that time I was quite I don't know how to describe it but mm -hmm. I was angry a lot I was angry a lot and he did not have the presence of mind to say okay this is because of her past there used to be a lot of arguments and stuff yeah. like, I end up most of them arguing with myself okay. because he would just walk away and then that would make me angrier Mm -hmm. So I say, you know what? This is it. Mm -hmm. This is it. Yeah. You know, but I kept growing after. After that. Okay. So how what are the different the differences from you know from your past relationships to where you are now today? Because you said earlier, you know, it's a lot better, you're happier. So what are the major differences that make you go like, yeah, this makes sense? I have my freedom. Mm. I am my own person. He's his own person. We're two different people, but we're still in a relationship. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. matters. Mm -hmm. At first, I didn't know that existed, but it matters. Um, what else? We do things together. We do things apart. Mm -hmm. I have a voice. Yeah. Even if sometimes you have to agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. and we have there's a lot in common but we we both respect the fact that it's not everything we're going to agree on mm -hmm. nobody raises his hand nobody raises mm. everybody listen yeah. honesty mm -hmm. and most of all respect there's lots of love but lots of respect. Yes. You know, um, yes. Tina Turner. I remember she said, What's love got to do with it? Mm -hmm. I thought it was crazy at first. Mm. But then I found the word respect. And respect 
goes a long, long way. Respect, including honesty, yeah. including being able to speak out and say what you have to say mm -hmm. without blowing up. Yeah. You know, so those are some of the differences. Mm -hmm. And we're both crazy people, so <laughs> I'm very supportive in what we're mm -hmm. very supportive in what each other is doing. Yeah, that's good. Very supportive. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay, wow, 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 wow. So I know we're coming close to the end, but I have to ask, um, for that woman out there who is in a similar situation uh, that you are, if you had to give that woman some advice, what would you say to them? First, use your voice. Mm. Let somebody know what's happening. Mm. If you can't get out immediately, go to a police station, mm -hmm. report what's happening. Let there be a paper trail in case you have to go again. Get help. If you can't find me on Instagram, at Coach Mariposa, find one of the other agencies out there that can help you. Because at the end of the day, especially if there are children involved, you need to get out. And I do not believe in that thing people say for the sake of the children. Mm. That is nonsense. Yeah. Right. So you got to you got you got to be honest with yourself when you realize it's not working. When you see those red flags, don't go and paint them over. <laughs> don't gloss them over. See them for what they are, because mm. you were not born to change anybody. If somebody wants to change, they do it themselves for themselves. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I think that's something I would tell people. And that's something I pass on to any and everybody that I encounter. Yeah. Live for yourself, love yourself more. Yeah. Yeah. And now knowing what you know now is what would you have done differently? Run. <laughs> Run hard. <laughs> Well, guys, you heard it. You heard I was it. A, I was a left from the very first sign. Mm. Very first sign. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I thank him, kind of, mm. yeah. for the person I am now. Because if I didn't go through it, I could not honestly help other women. Because it's okay for somebody with a degree only to say I am helping women. But look at me. I yeah. have the degree. I have the experience. So when I tell somebody, I know what it's like. I sincerely know what it is like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. So you mentioned earlier that you have a book. So tell us the name of your book and tell us where we can find it. And if there are any other projects that you're working on, tell us about it as well. Oh, that's funny. The book is called Journey of a Butterfly. Mm -hmm. My daughter designed the cover. Lovely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Um, you can read, you can get it from me. I'm trying to take it to the pop-up shop in Hansing. Mm -hmm. It should be there by July. But okay. other than that, you can contact me to get the book. Mm -hmm. And if you are close to me, I'll deliver it. If not, you can come and get it. Mm -hmm. No, it should be $25. And mm -hmm. I've been told it's quite therapeutic, and that's the aim for the book. Good. There's yeah. some more books in the making right now, but they will come out shortly. Good. I like that. I like that. And what about those persons who are watching internationally and they're like, I want to get my hands on that book. How do they get a copy? It's available on Amazon. Mm -hmm. I will give you the link, but it's available on Amazon. And if you want a personalized signed copy, you can contact me to get it. Tell us your number. Tell us your number, your email address. One two four six eight two eight two eight six two. The email address is coachmariposa at gmail.com. Or if not, you can find me on Instagram, coach underscore mariposa. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Deborah, thank you so much for sharing tonight. We definitely enjoyed it. You really enlighten us about so much, but you know, for sometimes we just miss the red flags. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for having me. 
Most definitely, most definitely. I see those of you who are watching here with us, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Remember, if you have not done it already, make sure that you hit that subscribe button so that you are kept abreast of all of our videos as soon as they come out. And if you didn't get a chance to do this before, share this link with someone else. You know, let's not assume that this person may not be interested because many persons are suffering in silence and we don't even know until they start to tell their story. So share this video with someone, let them hear Deborah's story and also drop your comments down below because we wanna hear from you. Guys, thank you so much for joining us again tonight and we're gonna see you again on our next episode on Battered, Bruised, Not Broken. Have a great night, guys. Goodbye.